Clemson. Uh, we saw it in 2016. Buckeye fans would like to forget that and would like to move on to what the possibilities could be for a national championship here in 2019. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Buckeyes. We've got um, Pat Murphy on the line for Bucknuts to help us sort things out. Pat, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. So uh, this matchup, of course, announced on Sunday. And there was no drama for the first time during a six-year playoff era in regards to who's that number four team going to be. We knew the four were very clear-cut based on the conference championship weekend. Uh, the, the drama all centered around LSU and Ohio State. The Buckeyes are number one going into the final weekend. They beat Wisconsin after struggling early, scored 27 consecutive points. But apparently, uh, in the eyes of the playoff committee, that wasn't enough to hang on to number one. Correct. And you, know, you can argue all you want about, you know, the two teams difference resumes. What what the committee valued in the end was that LSU had four wins against top 15 teams, including the the convincing win um, this Saturday afternoon against, against Georgia in the SEC championship game. Ohio State had five top 25 wins, but not all of those were, were top 15. Um, two of them were against the same Wisconsin team, which the committee said doesn't matter, but it's hard to, to not take that into account. And as you mentioned, Ohio State struggled some in that first half against Wisconsin going in. They were twice down 14 points. They went into the locker room down 21-7. to Obviously make a big comeback to win the game, um, you know, again by, by two scores. But after watching LSU earlier in the day, you know, you, you go into that committee meeting, I imagine it's hard to not take that into consideration and say, look, LSU looked like the more dominant team. What we'd heard from the committee for the last, for the first few weeks was that Ohio State was a complete team, offense, defense, whereas LSU's offense was very good. Their defense was not quite as good as Ohio State's. These last two weeks, it's, it's kind of been the opposite. Ohio State gave up yards through the air to Michigan, especially in that first half, gave up points. Same, same against Wisconsin. Um, now against Michigan, they were a little dinged up. Same, you could say the same in the Big Ten Championship game, but LSU gave up, I believe it was 17 points in the last two games. So proving that that defense has, has improved. Um, and on Saturday, they did it against the number four team in the country. Granted, Georgia's offense has not been outstanding this year, but you, know, you, you beat the number four team in the country the way they did. That's the committee's number four team. Uh, you know, you're, you're certainly going to get credit for that. And, and, that, and that's what the difference was now, you know, you say, what, what does it matter being number one, number two? Well, you look at what Vegas thinks of, of these playoff matchups. I believe LSU is something like a 16 point favorite against number four, Oklahoma, whereas number two, Ohio state is only, or is a two point underdog to number three, LSU or Clemson. I'm sorry. <laughs> so many teams here, number three, Clemson that, you know, you start to see, Hey, if Ohio state had been able to be number one, obviously Vegas thinks that that's a, a big advantage. So, um, you know, Ryan Day and the Buckeyes all agreed that they thought they should be number one, but said, you know, if you if you want to win a national championship, you're going to have to beat one of these very good teams, and that includes Oklahoma. So they, they, they're just going to deal with it. You know, I, I don't think you can worry about it too much. Um, the matchup set: Ohio State's playing Clemson out in out in Phoenix, and you know, the, you can't worry about not getting number one at this point. I think at times we get caught up in somebody else's rankings a little bit too much in evaluating these teams, meaning that when you look at Wisconsin and Georgia, uh, the defense for LSU catapulting itself or the committee catapulting LSU past Ohio State is that they just dominated the fourth best team in the country and Ohio State was playing the eighth best team in the country. And yes, they struggled in the first half, but then they dominated, completely dominated the second half. So why is Wisconsin eight and Georgia's four? They both lost to, well, actually the Wisconsin lost to Illinois now looks better than the Georgia lost to South Carolina. Illinois posted a better record than South Carolina. And Wisconsin's other loss was because they had to play the number one team in the country on the road. Georgia did not have to play the equivalent, which would be going to Death Valley and LSU in the SEC. So just based on evaluation of the teams in the rankings, uh, Georgia's magically four and Wisconsin's eight. Uh, I, I was impressed by the Ohio State comeback in that. Usually when you come back against the team, they implode. Wisconsin didn't show signs of that. They didn't turn the ball over. They didn't make stupid mistakes. They didn't blow coverages. They There were no easy touchdowns. There were no big gaffes in Wisconsin's play in the second half. 
they just got physically dominated. It was just speed and quickness and athletic ability taking over. It wasn't Wisconsin handing them the game. Uh, there was the, the the punt snap that was dropped, but that only resulted in a field goal, and Ohio State had stopped them anyway. So Ohio State's dominance in holding them to 35 yards and erasing uh, two touchdown deficit with 27 straight points was, in in my eyes, even more impressive in some ways Again, because Wisconsin didn't hand it to him. I agree with you, and you know that was the the conversation among um, those of us who who were covering the game afterwards, and and in uh, the the morning hours before the announcement was made on Sunday was, you know, how do you view these two games? How do you view these two resumes? And you know, you you get the the thirteen or so committee members in there talking. and you know it's ultimately what they came up with. and and you're splitting hairs at that point, right? I mean, you're looking at, Two teams, both thirteen and zero, dominated opposition. Both have very good wins. You know, there's not um, a game on either side where you look at and is like, you know, that team just just didn't have it that day. They, you know, they were both very good. And you know, one has to be one, one has to be two. If they'd flipped it, you know, you could you could be talking to to someone who covers LSU, who who you know is explaining why LSU may have had an argument for number one. So. You know, again, I think you're splitting hairs there. It, it is very different this year because if you look at previous years, a lot of times, um, especially last year, for instance, the the number three and number four teams, you know, aren't too different. Notre Dame and Oklahoma weren't expected to be Alabama and Clemson no matter what order they played in. Whereas this year, Clemson is a, a team that also probably had at least some argument to be to be number one. Um, just with the way they, you know, they completed their schedule undefeated. They've won every one of their last eight games by more than 40 points. Um, it's been a quiet rise for Clemson, but you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of the way things shake out, you know, Ohio state ends up with, with a more difficult matchup. Um, but that's because there's three teams this year that, that had, you know, very good seasons and, and have at least some argument for number one. So again, I think, you know, if you win this game, whoever it is, whether it's Ohio State or Clemson, I think they are then better set up to win the national championship. You'll get 15 or so days off. So it's not like you're going straight into that game beat up, but you'll have the momentum on your side. You'll have just beaten another, you know, like for like opponent, so to speak. Whereas LSU, assuming they beat Oklahoma, as everyone expects, will probably have a, a pretty easy game. You know, I imagine that'll be a bit of a shootout, but I think LSU is, is the better team. So you know, I think you'll have momentum on your side. I think you have a lot of confidence. It's it's similar to to me in 2014 when Ohio State beat um, Alabama, and you know after that point they felt unbeatable. You know, I heard one of um, the the linebackers from that team interviewed on the radio this morning, and he said they could have played the New England Patriots, and and they felt like they still would have won. I don't know if that's quite true, but uh, you know that's just the feeling you get from beating a team like like that year's Alabama or or you know this year's Clemson or Ohio State, whichever way it works out. So. We could look back at this at the end and 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 be like, you know, this all worked out actually in their favor as opposed to this being a disadvantage. But we're not going to know until they play the games and see how it all plays out. Ironically, for anybody out there that keeps track of my top 25, I have LSU at number one and Ohio State number two. But but I've had LSU number one for a long, long time. And I just didn't think that based on the results and the quality of the opponents, I didn't think it was enough for that decision to be made to flip flop them. In, in my eyes, I had already had LSU number one. Uh, you go back to 2014, and I made the same comment uh, yesterday, is that um, in retrospect, and even in the moment, once Ohio State won that game, I thought they won the national championship. I thought those were the two best teams, the two most talented teams, and that even though Ohio State was a five-point underdog to Oregon in the national championship game, which still makes me shake my head, I don't understand that, uh, didn't they see the Rose Bowl from 2010? It was basically the same setup. Anyway, uh, that um, that those were the two best teams, and that was the national championship game. Now, I don't, I don't think we have quite the same deal this year because LSU certainly, there is, if, if group think is accurate, there are three 1 and 1A teams here with the 1 through 3 seeds, Clemson, Alabama, and, uh, Ohio State, and LSU, versus Oklahoma being a step back, maybe being another... Alabama, Baylor, Michigan team. Who knows how good they are? We'll see if they can step it up. But the seedings do matter because Ohio State's going to have to, if, if you want to go the cup half empty, you're, you have to say, well, Ohio State's got to beat the two best teams in the country. Uh, then the glass half full, 
is basically what you just pointed out. If they do make it through Clemson, they got to feel invincible in a good way, not a complacent way, but a way to say, yeah, we, we just went through a war and we persevered and survived and we're ready for anything. And that was much like the Alabama game. Um, from a battle tested standpoint, Pat, it's interesting because this Ohio state team would, this version would be more battle tested against good teams, Wisconsin, twice Penn state, Michigan, than Clemson, who's had a cakewalk through a bad schedule. And I know Clemson fans get on me all the time, but they played, they played, it's not their fault. They played a bad schedule, but the Clemson teams battle tested in the playoffs and the Ohio state team, obviously, other than those freshmen that saw the field against Clemson in 2016, this is going to be a new experience for them. Yeah, that'll certainly be a storyline as, as we go further. And, you know, I asked a few guys we got to talk to on Sunday um, about the lack of playoff experience. And that, and that was one of the things they pointed to was, especially these last three games, you go Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the Big Ten Championship game. You know, those are, those are top 10, roughly top 15 teams that you had to play in, in back-to-back-to-back weeks. Now you get some time off, and, and there's an, obviously another one. But Clemson this year has has played, you know, I don't want to take anything away from the ACC, but as you said, the, the schedule hasn't been great. And, and that's just, you know, how this year worked out. We've seen the same thing happen to Ohio State before in the Big Ten. Um, you know, you go back to 2007 when they ended up playing LSU in the national championship game. That was a very talented Ohio State team, but they hadn't been tested. And, and when they played LSU, LSU was, was the better team on that day just because of, of – having gone through that throughout the season. So I think that's certainly uh, one way to look at it. I think the other way is you've got a Clemson team that, that does have the experience of the playoff, comes into this game pretty fresh, given that they controlled all of their games. Now, Ohio State did too, winning every game by you know at least 11 points. But these last few games were certainly, these last three specifically, were, were certainly a test physically, emotionally. Um, now you do have these three weeks to, to get um, healthy. And Ryan Day said they're going to have a practice week this first week, then have a week or a few days off where, where people can go home, players can go home, um, and that'll be over the, the national signing day. And then they'll get back and have a normal game week leading into Clemson. So there will be time for people to get healthy and whatnot. But Ohio State certainly went through the ringer here. You know, I think proved that, that they can compete in the big games. And obviously they, they just kept getting bigger and bigger and will so with this Fiesta Bowl game on December 28th. Pat, I can be the one to um, disregard the ACC for you because okay. they do it on a daily basis. All right. The ACC in 16 games, other than Clemson, we'll take Clemson and their 2-0 and record against uh, the other Power 5 conferences out of the mix. Uh, I'll give you a guess on this one. 16 games against the Power 5 by the rest of the ACC. How many games do you think they've won? Just based on the way you say that, I'm going to say zero. Two. Two oh, and 14. Okay. And one of those wins was against Rutgers. Oh, yes. That Boston happen. College beat Rutgers. Yeah. North Carolina beat South Carolina. Otherwise, 14 losses against the Power Five. Yeah, that's uh, it'll be interesting. I, I certainly, you know, I, I just I feel like this is a Clemson team that's that's built to win regardless of, sure. of that. But with that said, you know, you there there is something too going through a game or two in the season where you face some of that adversity, and and obviously Clemson did early against North Carolina. Some of those games even before that were Trevor Lawrence was inconsistent, throwing some interceptions. So, you know, it's not as if they, they just ran through the schedule. Um, like I said, they have recently, these last eight games have, have been pretty convincing. But, yeah, you're right. They have not faced a team that that is a, you know, similar level of opponent, um, you know, like for like in terms of what's across the ball from you. So when they do face that, uh, you know, I, I will certainly be interested to see how they respond in that Fiesta Bowl game. But, this team just has so much talent. I think they're very well coached. You know, I, I think that line at, at two points in Clemson's favor, you could have gone either way, Ohio State or Clemson favored, but but that sounds right. Just just a very close game. Um, you know, I haven't really dove into Clemson yet. In fact, I just started watching them more closely today. But from from everything I saw throughout the season and you know, reading about them a little bit, you know, I think I think they deserve to be right there. And, and regardless of their schedule, this will be a this will be a fun one. I don't see it getting out of hand for either team. Pat Murphy from Bucknuts joining us to talk Ohio State football with the Buckeyes, of course, playing Clemson for the uh, semifinal spot at the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, should we be concerned about Justin Fields' knee? I don't think so. Um, you know, I think 
you looked you look back at this Wisconsin game, was he as mobile as he normally is? No. But you know, he still put in a Big Ten championship game, most valuable player performance. Uh, you know, he was he was outstanding, especially in the second half, once once he kind of actually he I was gonna say calm down, but he said actually that he was too calm in the first half, that he needed to kind of fire himself up and get going. And and he was able to do that in the second half, obviously. The offensive line, you know, he gave up three sacks in the first half. But once once they kind of figured out Wisconsin's blitzes and how they were coming at him, remember Wisconsin had already played Ohio State in the season, so they had film of themselves attacking this Ohio State offensive line and did a good job in the first half. But once Ohio State got that sorted out, I thought Justin Fields was just fine, moved the ball well, threw the ball well. Like I said, they have three weeks. It's a sprained MCL. We don't know how severe it is, but that's an injury that will will certainly get better with three weeks off not having to, to do a ton, not taking hits. Um, he wore the bigger knee brace in the game, so his knee wasn't exactly exactly jostled around. Um, and I imagine he will be doing that in practice as well uh, leading into the, the Fiesta Bowl. But, you know, I do think against Clemson, you need a Justin Fields that can run. You know, I was just watching some of Trevor Lawrence today and was surprised with, with how much he was able to move the ball on the ground when they needed him to. Justin Fields has to do the same thing. And, you know, he needs to be the, the guy you saw earlier in the season against Wisconsin, against Penn State, that, you know, when something's not there, he can take off and run. Or they can call a, a, a read option play or or a play that might involve him running, you know, things like that. Um, you, you're not going to be able to beat Clemson, I don't think, just dropping straight back. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins is a very good runner in his own right at running back, but you need that, that dual threat ability that Justin Fields brings that makes him so dangerous uh, against a defense like Clemson's. I think he'll be much better running the ball in, in three weeks time. And I think we'll have a better sense of that as, as we go along. Ohio state doesn't like to talk about injuries, but fields has been pretty candid about, you know, where he is in terms of getting beat up against Michigan state and, and, and what's going on with the knee. So as we talk to him, as it gets closer, I think we'll have a better idea, but unless there's a major setback for some reason, I don't know why he wouldn't at least be, be more improved in terms of his health than he was against Wisconsin. 